Hello everybody, this is Debbie Eno from Teaches the Sex Coach with another episode of Talk Everything Education where I'll be talking to one of the psychologists, counselor regarding some of the support needed for educators and students when they've actually gone back to education. Um, I have gone back to education myself in the physical classroom and it's been really, really challenging. Online is one thing, but being in the physical classroom is another. And one of the things I actually have done when I actually went back in is find out from the students what some of the challenges they've had when they were away from school. Um, in the classroom, there are 22 to 29 students. Yes, we are right there with them. They're not wearing any mask. We know where, you know, some educators wear masks, but I don't wear masks. And there are times with students, you forget, I forget that we're supposed to be distant because the students are coming up close to you. You're also going close to them. It's only one class I saw that, you know, one student I was talking to and she had her mask on, but she keep on moving back. And I think, oh yes, it's COVID. That's the reason why she's moving back. It didn't clock on to me. I'm teaching them. Um, six formers, which is 16 to 18 year old. And it's interesting because another thing is a lot of them have been so attached to this mobile phone. And anytime I turn my back, when I look back, they're actually on the phone, either texting or doing something and they're constantly chatting to each other. So because I've been back this week, I had to just let it go, just let them talk to each other because they have not seen each other for a while. And even though they were talking to each other on the telephone, it was very different. And when I actually spoke to a number of them, you know, I spoke to all my classes because I had, you know, three class, three to four class a day. So I spoke to each student, you know, I took up, you know, probably sometimes the whole lesson to find out what it's been like for them being locked up because these are young people and what some of the challenges were. Oh my goodness, the first day I came back home, I was very, very stressed because I actually took it on. Because some of them were experiencing things like anxiety, bereavement, loss, although some of them haven't lost anybody physically, but lost that they were not able to go out and be with their friends. Some of them contemplated suicide because they couldn't cope with the lockdown some of them became very, very depressed. And the, the list goes on. It really is sad and it's really challenging. Some of them I had to refer to external because as they say to me, internally, there isn't enough. The counselor or the, um, the psychologist haven't got enough room to see everybody. So external was an option. But even external, there's still a long queue. So some of the things as educator, I, I you know, kind of refer to them is like talk to someone who you feel close to, or if you find an educator that you feel close to, talk to them. I suggested things like exercise, meditation. I did meditation quite a lot in my class this week. Normally I would do medication in, meditation in my class. I would probably do one session in the morning when they come in depending on the number of classes I have. And it might be another one when they're leaving. So it's just five minutes meditation. This week, I seem to have, I did meditation quite a lot. In the morning, when one class starts, sometime in the middle of my lesson, sometime in the end of the session. So this week I had to do quite a lot of meditation because the students were all over the place. And they gained a lot from it. We did exercise, we did stretching exercise, we did mindfulness. I played a lot of, music in the classroom, classical music. We did have some tea, we did some teaching, but I did more about, you know, work a lot more with their mental well-being because I felt that I needed to do that. Because even though some of them, this, this particular school I'm with, they started two weeks ago, a lot of them, the educators had not spoken to them about what they've gone through. Because some educators just went straight into the academic but for me, my background, psychology, et cetera, et cetera, I actually felt I needed to tap into the well-being of the students. And it was 
big. I had one student in one class suffering from anxiety. Her parents don't understand it. They shout at her, et cetera. And she's had this for a while. So during the lockdown, it's even greater. And I had three students break down in my class when I was talking to them. So I had to see them after the session. And my, what I could recommend to them is doing various exercises because as I said, the schools are not equipped for them to see the counselors or the psychologists. There are not enough spaces. So try external because the Anna Ford Center, we, you know, some schools are attached to that. So refer there, but yet again, it's still a waiting list because there's a lot of young people who are suffering from mental health issue. You need to look at what isn't said because the interesting thing about all of that is the students had lessons already because this is my first week back, but they've had lessons two, you know, some of them two weeks, some of them one week, and that have not been addressed. So which means that the academic has been dealt with. So these students are going along and doing the academic, but when I spoke to them, there come the bottleneck, they broke down, and et cetera, et cetera. So this is telling me as an educator, one of the things that schools need to do is find out from these children, these young people, what the issues are and how they could be supported, because I feel they can be best supported sometime in a whole group setting whereby they're spoken to and given different tools to work with and to support them to continue because they were continuing with the academic, but yet still they were breaking, they were falling apart. And one thing I've said to them is I am not interested in the academic, although my purpose here is academic, but because my background is in, as I said, psychology, mindfulness, CBT, etc., I felt I needed to address that. So the fact that they were dealing, they went on with the academic, and I came in and start looking at the, the well-being. It demonstrated to me that underneath this academic, the well-being need to be dealt with first in order to support the students. Because although they were sitting there, although they were taking in the academic, they still had issue, underlying issues with the mental health and well-being. So my urge to educators, please, 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 please talk to the young people about what has been going on with them. Because yes, they're going to be following the academic, but they're broken underneath. Because the fact is I went in and they were already in lessons one and two weeks. And I still had students breaking down in my sessions. And some of them saying to me, they wanna see me after the session. This is telling me that we haven't dealt with the issues and we need to start addressing it. Okay, I would like to welcome my guest on board, psychologist, as, as I said earlier on, and a counselor who is gonna be talking to us in relationship to how can we support the students and how can the educators also be supported? Because the educators also have big issues. Because before COVID, one in five educators were suffering from stress and mental health issues, concerns, anxiety. That's before COVID. Now it's even greater. I know everyone else is suffering from it. I understand all of that. But my major concern here is the educators and the students because it's big. Because as we know, everybody needs an educator and educators are really needed. Right, before, you know, let me just stop talking and just welcome my guests. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you very much for coming on board. Can you please introduce yourself? Can you tell us, you know, what country you come from? and what you do and then we are going to look at how can we support educators and students thank you so much ma'am for giving me such a good platform and for inviting me in today's session so uh, i am kripa khara i am basically from india that is kolkata uh, and uh, i had been i have my i have done my mphil in clinical psychol psychology and uh, i was working uh, in a school uh, it was like it was a residential based school and after that i have joined imrr as a clinical 
health and clinical psychologist. So I have a good experience with the students, the adolescent age group from class six to class twelve. So, okay. Okay. Even currently, I'm working and dealing with the, the students of different ages and the issues that they are facing currently due to lockdown COVID-19. So, and as the schools are not uh, has not been opened up, uh, so I'm dealing with them with the issues that they are facing. Right. Right. Thank you. Okay. So, what some of the challenges and what some of the issues these young people have been facing and you've been trying to support them with? Uh, basically, uh, uh, the cases that uh, I am dealing with is uh, with the anxiety, depression, and the different emotional issues. And sometimes there are behavioral issues too. Right. So to, how are you supporting them? Like, uh, I just uh, try to know the reason. I just try to know uh, the root cause behind the issues that they are facing. Then I talk to their parents personally, I just call them and uh, over or virtually I just uh, deal with them. And then uh, with the th different therapeutic management, uh, like the different breathing exercises, mindfulness, JPMR techniques I'm using with them. So yeah, it is challenging for us, uh, like being a psychologist dealing with the clients uh, for virtual, over it is quite difficult. Initially, it was very difficult to manage the clients uh, virtually, but now we are now used to, like now we are taking sessions online too. Right, right. So how do you support them? In, let's say one student is suffering from anxiety. That's one of the things I've actually identified in the classroom this week, okay. that there's a high percentage of young people suffering from anxiety. Some of them were suffering from anxiety before COVID. So during COVID, it increased. The level of anxiety is much higher. So what would you suggest to a student that is suffering from anxiety before COVID and now it's escalated? So what would you suggest to them? Initially, first I will ask them, or uh, rather I would like to suggest them for the, uh, for the deep breathing exercises. Uh, which will really help them uh, to kind calm their mind as well as body. Once they start focus on their breath and then initially, then gradually we can proceed with mindfulness techniques and JPMR is even a uh, very good technique. Jacobson muscle progressive uh, technique is very good for them. So, and yeah, making a time schedule, like time management is even at most important because due to lockdown and uh, like online sessions, they do not have any time management. They have time management issues. They're not following the things on time. They are just casual and doing things, whatever they feel like. And like they are just attending the sessions and sometimes they are not even and uh, doing some other work, staying online and showing teachers that they are online, but actually they are not attending the classes. Mm -hmm. So for them, uh, means we are working like we are giving the time management technique and uh, we are using that technique and like uh, we are asking students to uh, make a schedule for it. And uh, later we are working, like we are working with the educators too. Like uh, the whole day they are busy with their online sessions, preparing themselves, uh, like handling virtually the students. And it is a very difficult task for them, especially. Mm -hmm. So for them even, uh, we are conducting like uh, therapeutic sessions, like breathing exercises, JPMR techniques. So, but educators, they do not want to, like we want them to take out their time for self, but uh, they do not want to come out from the situation until and unless they won't work on self, they cannot work further. Like working, like a uh, whole day working online is a first, like it's too great, big thing. Mm -hmm. So like uh, giving time to self is even at most important. Mm -hmm. So are you saying, I'm going to come back to the young people just now, but I'm just listening to your feedback regarding the educators. So are you saying that the educators are not coming and taking sessions and they're not taking time for themselves? Is that what you're saying to us? Yeah, right, right. Why do you think that is so? Uh, just because they are just engaged uh, with the online teaching classes and preparing uh, for the examinations and uh, obviously their uh, home routine, uh, household tasks are even there. 
so for which they are just forgetting themselves so they have they need to take out their time mm-hmm. for themselves too like at least one hour a day is at most important mm-hmm. so that they can manage their life smoothly and for, uh, peacefully mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and no stresses and anxiety is even found in them like more anxiety is uh, found in them especially mm-hmm. the educators just because they have to handle the uh, students and it is a very great and i salute them and mm-hmm. it's a great job for them mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh my goodness so you you are offering sessions to the educators but they're not taking it on because they're too they're too busy this really confirms what i've been saying all the time i've been saying constantly to educators i understand that you have to be dealing with your students but it is so very 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 important that you take some time off to deal with you because if you are not able to deal with you you are going to be constantly in breakdown and constantly stress and in the long run it everything fall apart because i constantly say to educators when you are not taking time off for yourself that's selfish it is so very selfish not taking time off for yourself is very very selfish because it means that when you are coming out of stre- when you are coming stress when you become stress when you become anxious when you then break down it means everybody who depend on you no longer have you there because you were too busy doing what you were doing not taking time out for you it is so important that you guys take time off for yourself it is not what it stress in yourself because it's worse in the long run everybody who would rely on you can no longer have you your family have lost you whereas if you take one hour off in your day and start functioning with you as the psychologists have just told us it means that you are filling up your cup and then you have more energy to proceed it is so i find it so frustrating because even me going back into the physical classroom last week and i'm saying to the educators i say yes i understand that you really get locked in because you know you have one group after the other but at the same time you do need to take time off for you you need to breathe because when you don't breathe and don't rest everything fall apart so what would you suggest to the educators uh i would like to suggest them at least uh half an hour just take out your time like it's a very precious art, and it's all about self so mm-hmm. please take out half an hour of your time and uh, just focus try to sit calmly and just try to focus on your breath that's it like mm-hmm. nothing more is required like if you give time to yourself if you won't uh, be able to understand yourself and if you keep gathering the stress and obviously it would uh, burst out in a very bad way so mm-hmm. it is better like uh, like every day only half an hour uh, means uh, try they should try to focus on their breath that's it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay so if some educators are not able to focus on the breath the, you know the breathing exercise to calm them down what else would you suggest uh i would like uh, to suggest them to go for jpmr technique where they have to uh, focus on their body parts like on the uh, tightness and the stiffness of the body like the uh, from head to toe they have to focus each and every body parts Right. So like over there, uh, like they have to lie down or on the bed, or or they can sit comfortably on the chair. Uh, like from head, like they have to raise up, raise their head, and uh, feel the tightness. So that uh, when we do uh, JPMR technique, so over there, like uh, we are focusing and uh, we are just uh, putting efforts on each and every body part, and after that, like uh, we count. like suppose uh, i'll just show you a technique yeah. like uh, one thing like uh, we just ask the client uh, to uh, hold their palms up tightly and just focus uh, on their palms so uh, we count 10 and after that we ask them to release 
and uh, and hold their fingers so over here like the stress that they are having so ultimately it goes so it is mm -hmm. one of the wonderful technique that uh, educators as well as anyone like who who are suffering from anxiety only can uh, use this technique mm -hmm. like uh, from head uh, then uh, we go eyebrows then eyes then cheeks and uh, then uh, hands palm then uh, stomach legs feet so individually gradually we start with head and then uh, we end up with the toes mm -hmm. so likewise when we focus on each and every body part and uh, on the muscles especially the muscles muscle areas that it helps in loosening it so over there uh, the individual the client they feel very calmness and they feel means the feedback is very good like mm -hmm. when after doing this technique they feel very good Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you. So it's a matter of tightening the different parts of the body and then releasing it. Yeah. Like tightening the, the okay, fine. Okay, okay, okay. It's it's so interesting because I do feel that the educators are under so much stress and they don't know what to do with it because they don't know how to release it because another factor is especially the educators who are teaching online, they feel that they need to make everything perfect. And I keep on saying to them that you cannot make everything perfect. You just have to do what you are able to do. If it means just doing one thing, just do one thing and just do it well. Try to understand everything on the online platform makes no sense. It just adds to the anxiety and the stress. Because I myself know as an educator, one of my pluses, because I know how to deal with my stresses, etc. You know, when I actually feel it coming, actually either going to meditation or going to mindfulness. Well, and I also remind myself that I cannot learn everything on the online platform. It's not gonna work. I could only do one piece and just do it the best I can because everybody is struggling. And educators need to realize that you would not be perfect. It's a process. It's a journey. You just have to deal what deals with what's there. It's 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 quite sad because I'm having educators are telling me the stress level, the anxiety, they feel snowed under. I'm saying to them, okay, I hear that, but you need to breathe. Just breathe, just breathe, because. You have to deal with yourself, your family, and the students. Let's now go back to the students. Because this week, I haven't had a lot of dealings with educators. Because we are all, although I had dealing with educators, let me rephrase that. We are all in our own classrooms. So when we actually go to the staff room, it's, made, it's a matter of just breezing in and breezing out so you kind of are just talking to people in the corridor because because of covid they're saying that we are not to congregate etc cetera, etc cetera. so you don't really have enough time to really sit and talk to educators as you used to but my brief conversation with a lot of them in the in the corridor or in the kitchen or in the staff room the stress level and teaching virtually and teaching physically. The fact that the, work, the workload is heavy, yes, we know that. But my thing to all educators are, you need to take time. I said to one of them this week on Fridays, yes, I hear you have a lot of work to do, but you need to take time before you actually go back on. And that's been a real issue. My main focus have been is on, on my students because I have them an hour and a half a time in some classes. Some classes I would have an hour. It just depends on the days. Like Thursday and Friday, I had an hour and a half each class. Oh my goodness, yeah. An hour and a half for each class. And the first half an hour was talking to, because I had three different classes, talking to them regarding their mental health. And I have suggested, as I said earlier on, things like mindfulness, things like breathing, things like meditation, because there's lots of those on the 
on um, YouTube, and also EFT, which is Emotional Freedom Technique, and CBT, which is Cognitive Behavior Therapy. But especially Cognitive Behavior Therapy, the student needs support with that because sometimes you cannot do that by yourself. What is interesting, some of them were able to, to do it because even though I did it in the class like meditation and some of them, it took longer than the half an hour I had to get them to quiet their mind. So it's me saying to them, okay, when you go, but when you go home, this is what I want you to do. And when you come back next week, we're gonna follow it up. But what would you suggest? You've actually had a lot of students, you know, you've been dealing with online. And what's some of the things that you would suggest to some of the students, apart from breathing exercise? I know the breathing exercise is one of the most powerful one. It's one of the most powerful one, but however, it is also quite challenging for some students to do as well. So what would you say, what other things they've been coming up with, you know, you've been experiencing and how have you actually tell them or support them to deal with it? Because after all, you could only see them for half an hour or an hour the most. So basically, uh, whenever I talk to students, uh, they are Thank you for that. Yes, that's one of the things actually when I actually when I've actually asked the students, what were some of the issues regarding lockdown? What were some of the, the challenges they faced? Nine out of 10 of them said that the lack of not being able to socialize with the friends and not being you know, missing the classroom environment. Some of them said, although they don't have a lot of friends in the classroom, they miss not being able to have the, the whole class interaction, just being in the company of other people. That was one of the big thing they all seems to come up with. And even though they felt it was okay being at home with the family and they've actually um, become closer with the family, they still miss the whole class gathering. 
because we as human beings, we are social beings and we believe in socialization. And the more we're able to socialize, the better it makes us feel on a psychological basis. We may not have a lot of friends in the classroom, but the mere fact of being there with them and listening to interaction with other people, feeling the presence of other people, is great for most, for most of us because we're social beings. And it, 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 it was an issue. It's, it's a really big issue. And even though they've gone back into the classroom, which one student said to me, oh, miss, I really did miss not being in the classroom. And now, you know, it's really nice, you know, seeing all these people, although they're all not my friends, it's just nice being in there with them. And that's true because last week, this student haven't stopped talking. And I found it tiring because I'm constantly saying to them, okay, I hear that. Can you guys put your phone away? Can you guys please be quiet? And can you guys just listen up? And then I realized, I said, you know what? Let me just give you five, 10 minutes to just talk, get it out. And they actually were grateful for that. But it meant that yes, I've lost minutes academically, but what is so interesting in, this is not the first week they've gone back. They've been back three weeks now because I've only started now, I've only started in the physical classroom from Monday, I was still doing online. So it's interesting that they're still not, they still haven't stopped talking. They still have so much to say and, and it's, it's just, it's just amazing because I had to remind them, you guys have started three weeks ago and you're still talking. So this is clearly demonstrated the impact of this lockdown on the psychological, you know, effect of these people, these young people. Because even when I was going around the class, and asking them what it was like. Some of them, you know, had some of the, I said to them, one of the things I said to them, if you don't want to talk about it, it's fine. You don't have to talk about it. Because I could actually see from the facial expression that it was conjuring up a lot of sadness. And once you then started to talk and halfway through, I said to her, you know what, just, it's okay, that's fine. Because I could see she was welling up with tears. I could see her facial expression. Because for her, there was a lot of sadness. And for a lot of the students, there were a lot of sadness. So it was really, um, it was, I felt quite sad at one point, you know, I had a student later and she, you know, my session run on, I had a break and I didn't even have the break. I was talking to one student who was suffering from, from anxiety, et cetera. And she was crying because she was telling me how she was feeling to the point that the security had to come and say to me, miss, you're running late for your lesson. The students are not allowed to congregate in large groups, et cetera, which I'd forgotten because I was so taken up with the student. So it really is bringing home to me the greater impact of COVID. And I'm sure you could actually tell us how many students are actually coming to you, how many students you're actually dealing with in relationship to that. Basically, like uh, I'm dealing with the students from class 6 to 12. So like what I do is I take uh, group sessions as well as individual sessions class-wise. Okay. So uh, whenever I go for group activity, uh, group session, so over there, I just try to give them different emotional based activities. So when they do not come up with, uh, with their problems, so from that, those activities, uh, whenever I uh, try to give those activities, they just write it down. They are not doing it consciously because they are not aware of the things what I want them to write down. So, uh, such uh, like uh, means techniques I'm using. So from there, I just try to uh, get to know the emotions that they are facing currently. After that, what I do, just I just go uh, with the individual sessions. Like uh, with the one with the problem, I take the one who is facing it more uh, severely. So I just them individually so after that 
I just follow with the session. So it is not uh, like uh, with the students. I don't know how many students are there. Number of students I don't know. How much uh, the students are there? But yeah, class wise, I'm doing it. Right, right. So you have group sessions, and then you ask them to write something emotional. Okay. So how do you do? How do you do that? I'm just intrigued. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I just ask them uh, to draw a tree. So in a, it is like in a play method. I do it in a play method so that do not get to know that what I want them to do actually. So over there, I just ask them uh, to draw a tree or a thermometer and ask them to rate their feelings and uh, what are the emotions that they are facing currently or before few days, their, uh, what emotions that they had, the relationship uh, with the family, how are they feeling, or the colorings, I ask them to color the things, like from colors even we get to know our therapy is there, right? So from colors even, like I ask them to uh, color the pictures or draw a picture of themselves and color it with the different colors. So from different colors even we get to know lots of things. Mm. The, uh, the emotions that they are facing currently. Mm -hmm. So all these are the techniques, like various techniques I'm using with them. Mm -hmm. Because definitely they uh, will not come up with the issues directly. Mm -hmm. So we have to use some indirect methods uh, from the, uh, which uh, we can uh, try to handle their emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the different uh activities too, like uh, playing with them uh, means uh, uh, playing music and uh, I just uh, ask them to feel the emotion. Just verbally, I just uh, say, whenever I'll say happy, you have to make happy faces. Whenever mm -hmm. I'll say uh, be sad, you have to uh, make a sad face. Mm -hmm. So from there, even just get to know what emotions that they are facing mm -hmm. and how are they feeling actually when I ask them to uh, uh, say happy or uh, show happy uh, emotion, so what kind of emotions that they are getting mm. when they are sad or when they are angry and from there uh, like this, from this activity basically we got to know that uh, like lots of anger issues that they are facing just because they are not uh, coming out from going out anywhere from house and they're not allowed to lots of restrictions are there and mm. uh, attending online sessions and they cannot interact with their friends basically like adolescents are they are much towards their friends mm. so i just try them or uh, try to make them to interact with their family members so so that the attachment level gets more with their family mm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's interesting that you say that thanks for that because i also found that a lot of them had um anger issues well because of the attachments as well because i said to them i said to one group not all the groups actually i said to one group that this whole this whole experience that they've gone through it's like a grieving process first of all you you know like the different emotion and as i began to speak one student actually stopped me because i said i was saying to the whole class it was like a, a you know bereavement session that you know, you've gone through the bereavement. And that student stopped me and she said, Miss, I experienced all the emotion you could think about. I had all of that. And it's interesting, as she started talking, she started, you know, the, the emotion was coming out because of how she was feeling, all the emotion she experienced. And as they all said to me, there was no way to put it. So there I am going into the class and I was expecting, I'm not even too sure. At one point when I was, you know, going in, I was expecting not so much. I did not expect it to take up almost the hour and a half. But having 22 students and it took for one group of students, it took almost the hour and a half. And it actually made me realize, oh my goodness, there's so many issues because as I was going through the grieving process, I said to them, you need to see it as a grieving process and go through in your head what a grieving process would be like. Because some of the groups, I had to say to them, okay, look at it as a grieving process and look at the emotions that follow 
if you love someone and the person passed away, go through it like that. And it's interesting because halfway through, you know, the student, as I said, there were a mixture of emotion. There were the tears, there were the frustration. There was, oh my goodness, miss. Oh my goodness, yes. And this is how I'm feeling. So it's like getting them to come out with some of those things. Because as I said that, this is week three. They've started already and they've already started the academic and no one have gone through with them the psychological and the emotional factor. So they were still carrying this backpack with all of those things in it. And then I came along and then allowed them to feel free to express it. There were lots of tears in all my classes. And it was a situation where they were just expressing the feelings. And as you say, it was some of them was it was very, very deep because there were issues that was from childhood that actually manifest itself right now. Because one of the students I actually saw after my lesson, it was a childhood experience that actually came. And then she said to me, nobody understood her. Parents shouted at her because she suffered from anxiety. And another one said, you know, this happened in childhood, it's the fact that she was attacked and parents didn't believe. So COVID have brought out a lot of those things. And I keep saying that what we as educators need to be aware of is what is not said. And parents, I'm actually calling on you. You need to look at what is not said. It is easier to fix and academically behind child than it is to fix a broken child. And that's what I keep on repeating in all my lessons because some of the lessons, because from, from nine o'clock to 3.30, you know, one class after the other, some classes from 10 o'clock to, to 3.30 or whatever, those are four classes. So it's like reminding the students that you need to do something to fix the broken pieces. And educators need to be aware of all of that. They also need to be aware of themselves. Right, I've talked enough over to you now. You know, you need to tell us how we could actually support, you know, how we could we support the educators and how we could support the students. Going into the classroom have actually, have actually, highlighted a lot of things to me because on the online platform, you're not seeing it. Basically, uh, over here, uh, I would like to suggest like uh, uh, professional uh, clinical psychologists or counselors should be there, uh, should be hired in school. So that uh, individually, like students for student reason for the management of students, psychological issues and all, and obviously the educators that they are uh, facing issues, even they have their personal issues as well as the things that they are facing as uh, like after marriage, the uh, women, they have to manage both mm. home as well as the job that mm. they are doing. So over there, like sometimes what happens, they mix up their life, like personal life, they, uh, they mix up their professional life with their personal life. So uh, for them, even a counseling is at most important. So in each and every school, the counselor or a clinical psychologist must be there so that uh, like mental uh, health, like mental issues that they are facing, the stress or the anxiety or depression, are the thoughts that they are coming. Basically, everything deals with the thoughts, like the uh, thoughts that they are negative thoughts that they are uh, that are coming, so that uh, the psychologists or the counselors they can help them out to come out uh, with those thoughts negative and all the with the positive ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, but you see, in all the educational institution, there are one counselor or one therapist. Just think, some of these schools or some of these six from colleges, they have, some of them have 2,000 students. 
some have 1,500 students. One of the challenges, you have one psychologist that have to support all these people, all the students. We know that it is not enough. My question to you is, how can educators best support this student? Because for me, it's like one student saying to me, I'm saying to one student, okay, I understand that you have, there's a lot of issues here you're experiencing. Have you gone and make an appointment with the, um, with the counselor? She said to me, miss, there's no way I'll be able to get an appointment. There's, so, there's only one of her and she's got an assistant and she's not going to be able to see me because I've gone to make an appointment, but she still cannot even see me to make the appointment. So in situation like that, what can educators do? How can educators best support students? And what is really, what I find really, really sad is nobody is really addressing this. And I'm looking at it from me just being into school one week. I've just been in there just one week in the physical classroom. And in every class I've had, I've had at least five students who I see as could effectively do with a one-to-one -one session. And the question is, how can they be supported? I'm not talking about the others who, you know, need to be supported, but constantly need to say, okay, well, this is what you could use, etc. The question is, how can educators be supported to help these students? Educators, like uh, if they work on self, and uh, obviously when they will work on self, then only they can support, give uh, useful support to the students. Until and unless they won't uh, help themselves, obviously they won't, won't, they won't be able to help the students too. Mm -hmm. So uh, like over here, I would really like to request all the educators to work on self, give time to self and not only the breathing exercises, you can do anything for half an hour, just whatever you feel like. The things you like or the hobbies you have, just focus on that, just for half an hour. Or maintain a diary, if you love to write a diary, then just write it down so that all your negative thoughts or the emotions would be, uh, would went out. So when the students say, uh, after like uh, once the, um, uh, the uh, emotions are uh, vented out so the students when the students are coming up with their problems and, and it, it would be very much easier way and they can handle the students in a very smooth and in a balanced way mm, 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 mm. yeah it's really um i don't know it's on reflection i really uh, you know, it's like I'm lost. I'm lost in all sense. Because this week alone, I came back from work this week. Every evening I got back, I felt emotional and psychologically drained. I do spend a lot of time with self. When it comes to self-care, I'm hot on self-care. I It's important for me to take time for me, for me to meditate because I meditate twice a day. It's important. And I meditate in between time as well, depends on what's happening. And I keep on stressing that to the educators. But what I'm seeing in school is it's at a breaking point because the focus is on the academic. I understand that. But the emotional and psychological factors are being neglected and the students are crying out. Because my first part of the lesson, as I said, was dealing with the psychological because I felt that I couldn't teach. I needed to know how they were feeling because 
I wanted to also know whether or not some teachers had spoken to them. And I found that, that nobody, so many classes I had, nobody had spoken to them. So it was a situation that just left. And as we know with young people, if we don't ask them, they're not gonna tell us. And what I'm urging parents to do is, please, please, please speak to your children. Look at the behavior that is manifesting. Look at the anger that they're demonstrating. Look at the fact that they're neglecting the schoolwork. Look at the fact that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Look at the fact that they're eating pattern. Look at all those things and then start talking to them. Because I keep on saying to people, right now that we may not see the full impact of COVID and the lockdown, we are going to see that around possibly December time because it's a gradual process as people now coming out of lockdown and beginning to embrace the new normal. It's a big factor. And if people are not using various techniques to deal with it, the mental health of individuals and young people are going to be on the far more on the, on the higher increase than we ever dream about. And I'm seeing it in schools. Anyway, let's just sum up. Oh my goodness. As to um, what techniques, as we were looking at all the techniques, Let's just wear that we will actually say to, you know, tell the educators and the students. And just hopefully by me doing this program on a regular basis, highlighting to the schools that they need to equip the educators. What I've heard from some of the, um, the institution is, well, the educators know that if they need to speak to our counselors that they're there, for me, that is not good enough. You need to have sessions that the counselors talk to the educators in sessions, in groups, and support them. Because just telling educators or telling students that you know where to go is not good enough. Sometimes you have to come to them. And when I go back into schools next week, there are some of the things I would be suggesting to the heads of departments that they need to, instead of saying that the educators know that the counselors are there, they know the lines that there, you need to bring something to them and bring something to the students. Because my discussion with the students have told me that we need to be going to them. They're not going to come to us, especially in the six forms. We need to be going to the six from students because they're not going to be coming. And whether or not it's once a day or once a week, we need to be going to these people because the students are at breaking point. We are pushing in the academic, which they're actually writing everything on paper, but they're not taking it in. Right, tell us, you're shaking your head. <laughs> Yeah, actually, this, uh, you are absolutely correct. What uh, we are doing here is we are just uh, letting students, uh, we are just forcing them. Sorry, but yeah, we are just asking them to write the things. If they are not speaking up, then we just ask them to write and just ventilate out the things. So this is one of the best techniques. So when they are not comfortable uh, like uh, with the individual or, or the other, so when they write the things, so from there even we get uh, to know lots of things, the emotions and uh, uh, the things that they are facing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's some of the things that I'm urging parents, I'm urging educators, I'm urging school heads, etc. You need to go to them. Because I've asked the two schools, I actually did ask them, okay, what have you got in place? They've told me that, um, yes, the educators know that they've got a very good system in terms of the counselors are there. The students know that the counselors are there. 
to support them, etc. There is one thing knowing they're there, there's another thing going to them. There's sometimes we need to bring things to people. And from my experience of being in the classroom just for this week alone, I realized that we need to go to people. And so what I'm going to suggest to everybody is, educators especially, you need to take care of self in order to take care of others. Take time off for you. I cannot stress enough. In the next two weeks, I am going to start doing some self-care programs, which educators, you guys need to start looking at. And parents, you need to start looking at what's going on with your child. And the online system is challenging because the educators cannot see really what's going on with the students. They could see them at a distance. So the onus is on the parents to listen to what your child is saying and listen to what they're saying about the online platform. Listen to the complaints they're making, hear it, then find ways of dealing with it. Because being taught online is not easy for anybody. It is necessary because there are no option, but you need to find a way to hear what, this, what your children are saying. I cannot stress that enough. Educators, you need to take care of yourself before you could take care of anybody. Right, can you just give us some tips, please, as to how we are going to go forward on this? Uh, like, yeah, we can uh, go for different techniques, like for special educators, we can plan out pest management, uh, uh, like uh, techniques so that uh, they can, if they are not taking out time for themselves, uh, at least through different uh, sessions or through different conferences, and they can attend the sessions and uh, through that sessions, they can start practicing. Like what I am doing with the staffs of uh, my school. So over there, like I am just picking up them every day and just forcing them. You need to take time for yourself. If you're not doing it personally, so when I'm taking sessions, so at least through sessions, they are like half an hour, just they are giving time to themselves, like reading exercises or mindfulness, or I just make them write something or the other so that they can ventilate out, uh, ventilate out uh, their uh, stress or the feelings that they are suffering. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Thank you very much for that. What I could stress to educators is, you know, my tip, you need to take care of yourself, you need to journal, you need to do breathing exercises, you need to plan your lessons, plan your time for you, you need to time manage, you need to do meditation, listen to music, you need to dance, sing, I'm not saying that you're a singer. You don't have to be a singer. Just sing. You need to dance. I'm not saying that you have to be a dancer, but dance. Release the stress you're experiencing. Do some releasing. Whatever method you're going to use, you need to release. So those are my tips for educators. Can I have three tips from you, please, for educators? Three tips. Uh, three tips. Firstly, I would like to ask them, go for self-talk, like, mirror like uh, go in front of mirror if you cannot talk with other just talk it out with yourself like standing in front of mirror and talking out whatever you feel like for 15 or 20 minutes they can do this then uh, they can go for uh, bath <laughs> hot showers or cold showers so that they can feel relaxed and uh, obviously drinking lots of water to hydrate themselves yeah yeah okay thank you very much for that what you've actually support us with etc and i cannot stress enough the importance of taking care of your mental well-being because i keep on repeating it is easy to fix an academically behind child but it is extremely difficult extremely difficult to fix a broken educator and a broken child because broken brokenness is more challenging to do anything with. So before you get to the stage of being broken, you need to take time out for you. 
Thank you very much, everybody. Good evening, good night, good morning for listening on. Please like, share, and comment. I am still looking for educators. I'm still looking for wellness practitioners to come onto the show. I think it is so important that we constantly air this because the more we air it, the more people are going to hear it, the more they're going to start taking notice of it. There is no point in keeping it to yourself, keeping your stress, your anxiety to yourself. It is better you start talking it out, you write it out, you dance it out, you sing it out, whatever method you're going to use. I urge you to start taking care of yourself because this COVID situation is big. It's bigger than we ever anticipate. And the impact it has upon individual mental well-being is greater than any of us would ever imagine. Take care of yourself. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys later in the week. Bye-bye.